Hi, in this video, we're going to uh, look at the client server model and the peer to peer model. So there are two uh, networking models. There's the uh, client server based net, uh, model, which requires central servers responding to client requests. And there's the peer to peer network model. And there's various variations of this with peer to peer networks and peer to peer applications. Let's take a brief look at each one. So traditionally, the uh, uh, networking has been built and based on a client server architecture. In the client server model, two computers typically communicate with each other by using request and response. So the qu requester, the one asking for service, is the client. And the responder is the server, the one servicing the client's request. Okay, so in a client server model, the files are downloaded from the server and files are uploaded by the client. So when we think of as, uh, as our own computers, we're typically downloading web pages, downloading files, and downloading whatever it is, movies, music, whatever. And when we're sending information, we're usually uploading. We're uploading to a server. We're uploading a request. We're uploading files to an FTP server. Yeah. So servers typically have multiple clients requesting information at the same time. Okay. And this requires servers to have specialized software and also typically require to have more processing power, more memory, and more storage because they're actually having to uh, store information and maintain information for multiple clients. If you, re if you remember from the videos on TCP, you saw all those state requirements required, having to set up a the three-way handshake to establish the connection. The server has to do that with every client has to maintain window sizes, congestion window, send window, receive window, sequence numbers, all this kind of stuff. Has to maintain all this information for every client. So this requires uh, typically more uh, processing, memory, storage, et cetera. Okay, so uh, as far as most networks in the internet, it's kind of service providers kind of base their architecture on this client server architecture. So similar to here that we have, I show Westfield, Westfield Valley Mall here. You notice it's, uh, this is over in San Jose and it's near a lot of major thoroughfares, uh, major, two major freeways and uh, some major roads like Stevens Creek Boulevard, all major roads away from residential sections. Okay. So, <clears throat> so services provided via the internet are optimized when these services are located where there's big pipes, a lot of bandwidth. ISPs build their networks with a hierarchy of bandwidth and even constrained customers' residential bandwidth for uploading so they are less likely to be servers. So just like you wouldn't want to put a big mall or a big retail store in the middle of a residential neighborhood, besides the neighbors complaining, there's just not enough parking, the, the roads aren't gonna handle it in and out of, uh, uh, of that, that retail store, they're just not built for that. So this is why we have large shopping malls, large businesses, large retail centers, downtowns, typically near where there's uh, roads that can handle the traffic. This is why we have a lot of our content providers, service providers that are uh, with web services and this sort of thing, all the major web services are also near locations where there are lots of bandwidth. And residential customers typically have less bandwidth. Okay, the peer-to-peer -peer networking model. And some concerns about this, actually, well, there's with IPv4 mostly the concerns. We'll get to that. So peer-to-peer -peer networks decentralize the resources of the network. That's where, hey, anybody can be a shopping mall. Okay, and you know, anybody can, anybody can be, be a server. Data can be located anywhere and on any connected device. In a peer, peer-to-peer -peer architecture, data is accessed from a peer device to another peer device without going through any kind of dedicated server. 
you could be a server, I could be a server, anybody can be a server, and we can all be sharing information together. Well, see, that's not always as easy as it sounds, mostly because of IPv4 and private addressing. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But each device, known as a peer, can function as both client and a server. So some common peer-to-peer -peer networks include G2, Bitcoin, BitTorrent, eDonkey, and many, many, many others. Um, some of the peer-to-peer -peer applications are based on the Nutella protocol, where each user shares whole files with each others. Uh, many peer-to-peer -peer applications allow users to share uh, pieces of many files with each other at the same time. This is uh, BitTorrent technology. Okay, so one of the problems with implementing pure peer-to-peer -peer is I, private IPv4 addresses and NAT. So a customer here, in, over on the left here, can't directly communicate with a customer over on the right because they both have private IPv4 address spaces. Okay, this is why we can't easily just directly connect to each other using Skype or instant messaging or anything. We have to both go through some kind of public server that we can both reach. <clears throat> it's sometimes called an index server. It helps the two peers uh, uh, connect to each other via the index server. But once they're connected, once the index server connects the two, communications may, and I say may, take place between the two peers without having to go through the index server. This has to do with something called TCP, UDP hole punching and NAT transversal. Uh, again, it adds complications to the application, to the network, latency, delay, uh, and is basically just a workaround to allow these two private network devices to be able to communicate with each other. The true solution to this is IPv6, where we can directly communicate with each other because there's no private IPv IP addresses used in this fashion and there's no network address translation. We all have uh, global routable addresses. All right, hope this uh, explained a little bit about the difference between client server model and the peer-to-peer -peer model.